The problem here is that big knot. It's right at a critical point. This is the area where the edge of the house is vertically downwards and then that's the part that sticks out of the, of the side of the wall. So there's an axis, an axle point here where the force pressing downwards here is stretching this area, it's stretch forces. So this piece has that big knot in it and if I use it if I use it the way around it's at the top of the roof I'd rather use it as one of those that go underneath the triangle but actually I've you I've already made all of those so I can't use it for that anymore unless I just use it as a shorter piece in the valley where the two roofs meet so I'll do that I think I still have enough pieces of wood oh, yeah I have plenty of pieces of wood here I still have uh, about seven or eight pieces. There are a couple of rejects, but I ordered about 15% more than I needed for this job, precisely because I'm a bit choosy about my materials and I like to be able to set some aside if they're too wide in the growth rings, like that one. Less, less than three growth rings per centimetre that's very weak piece of wood hasn't really have any place this probably would be better as kind of indoor furniture or something has no place in buildings they shouldn't even be growing wood like that in my opinion they don't have to they do it because they're uh, they want a fast turnaround they want to have less decades turnaround i don't know if it's 60 years is it from planting to harvesting 60 or something I don't know comment if you know about it I know that there are quite a few people that work in the industry that watch these films because they've commented before so do comment because if you've got good information it's good for all of us so I would like to have timber that's grown for about 100 to 130 years for um, eight inches it's a lot slower something like this or this they look like they're about 90 that one looks like it's about 100 so uh, yeah the, the pricing structure in my opinion is all wrong with timber it should be priced depending on how good quality it is and that should be decided by people that really know what they're talking about um, you know there are some people that really do know a lot about this stuff and they could easily set up the guidelines for classifying how good timber is what it's useful for uh, okay babbling again sorry i want to do some work on the roof construction the part that i haven't started yet is this area This part, I've made those parts, they're joined in the middle. There's a dividing wall and the join is either side of that wall. This is called an undergut in Norwegian. At the end of the building it, it's um, a tie beam in English and it's called Topsvil in Norwegian. So I'm going to have a piece, the middle of the building isn't, isn't exactly and that supporting dividing wall between the garage and the carport, it, that wall isn't exactly in the middle of the building. But I want to have up here a construction with a beam that runs the length of the building, that's called a Mönsos in Norwegian and then another one that sits on top 
of those beams under gutter. And then from the side, it would look something like this. So there'll be a couple of svarter, as they're called in Norwegian, skrå svarter, wind braces, to triangulate this box. And I'll maybe also use bolts vertically with, um, you know, nuts and bolts, long bolts, and screw those together so that there's, so that there's pressure that's a very, very strong, it's the way they build bridges, I think, in uh, New England. I think I, uh, my barn is, is built like that. It's a really good, it's a really good way of doing that. You can build in pre, you can make it pre-stressed if you make the, uh, is it the s sloping ones a little bit larger? Yeah, if these sloping ones are a little bit larger and then you just tighten it up, it, it pre-stresses the whole thing so it acts like a, a pre-stressed concrete beam. And so now with that set in section, now that's like a facade and then this is, this is the section of the same thing. That's the section, that's what it looks like in section, that piece. So all of this is behind that in that picture. And then I don't know how many of these I'll have. I don't think I'll have one on every every beam. I might have one on every beam. I, I'm, I haven't decided yet. It's they're very power, very big pieces of wood in this building, but I have to make sure that it's um, more than it needs to be. You know, otherwise it's not very good for the building regulations. Just thought while I'm at it, you could see the other drawings. These ones are just rough ones. I can make copies of them. Um, actually, that's an original drawing there. You see, it's quite simple. The original drawing is quite simple. It's just a pencil drawing on see through, you know, the see-through paper. That's the existing building. That's the carport, that's shaded slightly to show that it's a carport. That's the ground plan. So it was supposed to be 650 wide and it was actually three and a half centimetres, uh, 3.4 centimetres too narrow. The builder that did the, the entrepreneur that did the ground founda the foundations. But that's completely normal. I didn't expect it to be perfect, although it would have been nice if it had been perfect because everything was made to fit, fit perfectly. Such as the breeze blocks. They're 15 centimetres wide and it would have fitted beautifully if they'd been accurate, but as it is, it, they didn't make it square, so there's a two centimetre discrepancy, which means that it sticks out a centimetre on either end of the building. Well, that's a shame, but I mean, it won't matter because the building will be rendered. The breeze blocks there will be rendered with a cement render, so you, it won't, you won't see it and it won't make a difference to the structural integrity. It'll be fine. So I wasn't that bothered. I'm just going to get on with this work over here, so the sound won't be any good. So I'm just going to mock up one part here. Well, that simulates the undergutted. So this simulates what I was talking about. This beam is the one that goes along there. 
These ones are standing up and which have the wind braces. And there should be space for another one on top here. There's another way of doing it, I and mean, there are lots of different ways of doing it, of course. I could use a smaller piece. I could use a smaller piece, that's for sure. It doesn't really need to be boxed, but I have got enough box to do that. Uh, box is what we call the 15 by 15, 5 inch by 5 inch, we just call it box in Norwegian. See, I thought about this last time and didn't come to a proper conclusion. That's why that piece is uh, a bit long, is because I think perhaps I decided that I might, um, I might not use the 15 by 15 box because actually it would probably do the job just as well to use a 15 by seven and a half.
I'm not sure if there's one gable piece, a gable joist left to cut, but I'm not going to do it just now. And the reason for that is that where the two buildings intersect, the joists don't go all the way across. I think I might have already made one or two too many. Now this is just exactly the problem with the serial production is that you, uh, unless you have it all listed up and ticking it off, it's quickly and easily the case that you might perhaps make too many. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I mean the pieces have to be used anyway. I don't, I can't use a short, I don't have any short pieces that I could have made it from anyway. So if I have to cut the, the end off, it doesn't really matter. You can see exactly how those beams support the roof. That's called Tarkud stick, the roof sticking out. This is kind of obvious. I'm sure it's got a really great English name as well, but I don't know it. So, obviously where the two buildings intersect here, that isn't going to be, that's not going to happen. That, that bit that sticks out doesn't exist because it's inside the building. So I might have done one or two, well, I might have done at least one too many, but we'll see. Okay, that's today's update. It's getting a bit dark now, so I'm not gonna film anymore. I've put the pieces that were stored on the building into the pile, 